We're going to import a, a LUT that is a dot Q, uh, excuse me, a dot C U B E or dot cube file. It wasn't intended for uh, Photoshop per se, Photoshop and Lightroom per se, but you can uh, import them. Most of them you'll find on cinematography and videography sites, uh, but um, a lot of them are useful as, as you'll be able to see. Most of them are the creative type or of film simulation. However, before we start on Photoshop, there's a setting in Lightroom uh, that you need to make sure is set to off or it will cause you a lot of consternation, which it, it did me. Uh, so go to your edit menu, preferences, and make sure you're on the presets tab. Right here, location, make sure store presets with this catalog is not checked. If it is checked, what happens is Lightroom doesn't look at the same path that Photoshop uses to import LUTs. And when you go back to Lightroom to use the uh, LUT you just imported, it won't be there. So make sure that this is not checked. All right, we're going to close out of Lightroom. And we're going to start in Photoshop. You have to have an image up, and it does not matter what the image is. It's not really what we're going to uh, apply it to. It's just so that we can get into Camera Raw, which has the uh, application to process a profile. So we're going to go up to Filter and Camera Raw. Okay, now that Camera Raw is up, Notice that in the basic panel, it also has a profile browser, which Camera Raw is exactly the same as the develop panel in Lightroom. So if you check the profile browser, you can see all the profiles, including the one we imported directly and we used in Lightroom, like this one, are there. So let's close that out. Now, where you can import um, the cube files is you have to go to presets. Okay. Now, here's the double secret handshake. If you go down here and say create new presets, you get this preset uh, dialogue, which has uh, nothing to do with profiles. So cancel that out. Hold down the Alt key on PC or the Option key on Mac and then click again. And now all of a sudden you have these, uh, this profile dialog. And you can uh, be a hero showing all your buddies that you know the secret. So first thing is, is what are we going to name uh, this new profile? I had downloaded two cube files from the internet and one of them is called chromatic so I'm going to name it that then the part that says group uh, that is the folder that it goes into and you can see the folders that we have like the photo cafe one that we imported so I'm going to create a new group and I'm going to call that cinematic filters you name it whatever you want okay this should not have any settings selected because you should have you should not have done any uh, adjustments on on the photo or else they'd be included in the LUT and you're really not then really you have your own personalized LUT and not uh, what the person intended so that should none of this should be checked tone map strength always leave at low or normal look table you'll probably never use that uh, these are specialized LUTs that people can go and create by basically creating an excel spreadsheet and entering a bunch of numbers uh, 
So that'll probably never be used. Now here's our color lookup tables. <clears throat> uh, check that. And it's going to open a browser to try to find a, a cube file. So in this case, I have uh, created uh, or have downloaded this chromatic cube, which is again from a cinema site on um, a uh, what this does is it creates a classic chrome look is what they call it. So we'll open that up. You shouldn't really change any of these. The, the table, the, the space, normally is sRGB. Sometimes it's a, Adobe RGB, and usually they'll tell you on the website. Uh, gamut, don't change that sample. It needs to say at 32, so ignore that. This part here has to do with that strength slider or mount slider that is on top of the profiles. So at minimum is 0%, meaning there will be no uh, effect applied to your image. In the middle is 100%. So right there in the middle, uh, which is its default, that is 100% of the uh, effect applied. Now, what are you going to have for max? 200%, um, usually these LUTs, when you roll them up above where they're intended, they fall apart pretty quickly. So I usually reduce that to about 125%. So when they go all the way to the right, they're getting 25% more. And in fact, you'll see what I'm talking about. And select OK. OK, just to show you that it created it, if I go back to the basic panel. And I go down and we see now we have cinematic filters and we have chromatic in there. So I'm going to import one more file into that folder. So I'll go back to my presets, my alt or option and click on new presets. And uh, the, another one that I found online is one that uh, gives a sepia effect, sepia and contrast effect. So I'm going to just call that sepia contrast. And we've already created cinematic filters, so I'll select that. And then the uh, file right here, black and white sepia contrast dot C-U-B-E file. I'll open that. Change my max to 125%. Say OK. And then let's look at the basic panel. And go to our cinematic filters. And now you see that we have two LUTs in here that were created for uh, color grading film. So we're going to say OK. And what we're going to do is bring Lightroom up at this point. As I said, the Lightroom doesn't look at the pro, it only looks at the profile files one time when it starts up. So you always have to restart it to get a new one. So let's pick a uh, different image here. We're going to go with this one. And. We're going to go with our develop module and then go over to our browser and look at our cinematic filters. You can see the effect there. And if I click on it, you can see what I do with increasing the amount. See that one? That's pretty dramatic. Let's bring that down and let's use that one for a little. I'm just going to take it down. It still has a, a little color in it. 
that's set at uh, 33%. Um, so if I do before using the backslash key and hit the backslash key, and you'll see the effect that it did. So let's close that out. And then normal process would be go ahead now and do your adjustments using the sliders. Maybe I'll adjust the black levels, uh, white levels. Uh, I think I'll up the exposure after that. It's pretty good. Maybe add a little contrast and a little clarity. Okay, so let's look again before and after. Now, why I did, did that showing you this workflow is let's say you had a shoot and creatively you decided it was going to have a certain look and we were going to use this sepia as our basis for the look for that shoot. And this is why you would go back into Lightroom because, of course, Lightroom doesn't have all the controls that uh, Photoshop does, but it does have one thing that Photoshop doesn't. So we'll go back to our, and let's say these series of shots. Let's say I want the, now that I did my basic look, I want to apply all these series, the look to all the shots. I would select them all and then hit sync settings and you can see right here the, the treatment profile and these are the, the adjustments i did make and they're already checked and so i'm going to say synchronize and now let's take a look at what we've got this was our original one And here are others. And now you have a standard look for the entire shoot, plus something that you could reproduce on other shoots, which is one of the advantage of bringing in a lot, or even creating your own, to get a standard look or a standard style that you can apply over and over again. Okay, our next uh video is going to go over how to create your own custom looks.